Welcome to video number three, grade 11s. And in this video, we're going to be looking at more new tools for you to use. You'll remember I told you that trig is a very unique part of maths because everything is so interlinked. And it becomes very important to understand each piece of the puzzle as we go along because if you miss out something in the beginning, it will become very difficult to understand questions as we get a bit further. So just to remind you then, in the first or second video rather, we dealt with trig reductions. And you'll remember I did a little proof, I showed you more or less where we found it. If you didn't understand how I found it, it's okay, as long as you understand how to apply those reductions. So we figured out that the reductions were 180 plus or minus theta and 360 minus theta. Those were the reductions that we dealt with. And I said to you that by finding these reductions, what we could actually do was update our cast diagram. And in this video, where we start dealing with co-functions, also co-ratios as they call it, we're going to have another update to that cast diagram. So in the first video, you saw that the cast diagram looked something like this, where we had 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And for the reductions, we focused on this x-axis over there, the horizontal axis. And we filled in our reductions as 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, and 360 minus theta. Now that we've done that, we'll be focusing on the vertical axis over here, so the y-axis. And immediately what I can tell you to do is go and cross out the 270 at the bottom. We don't ever use reductions or co-ratios that involve 270 degrees, which means that we're left with 90 degrees. And so you could probably already see then that the co-functions that we're going to be dealing with in this video will make use of 90 minus theta and 90 plus theta. So those are the co-functions that we'll be dealing with in this video. Again, just like before, you have to draw your cast diagram. It's extremely important. If you don't draw your cast diagram, you're not going to be able to really see where each of these reductions and co-functions lie in the Cartesian plane and whether our ratios will be positive or negative. Now, a co-function is different in the sense that it is a swap between sine and cos. Now, what I mean by that is that when we use one of these co-functions, sine will become cos or cos will become sine. So just to sort of give you an idea of what I mean by that, basically if I gave you something like sine and then I used this cofunction over there of 90 minus, we would do the same as before. So we drop the reduction and we write out the angle, but because we are now swapping between sine and cos, our answer will be cos of theta. And it's actually fairly easy to prove why this works. So let me show you exactly why we can use these co-functions. So if you have a look at the two functions that are sketched out on your screen in front of you, you'll see that we've got the green function over here, which is a sine function, and then we've got the red function over here, which is a cos function. You can tell that, the, that that's the case because a cos function always starts at 1, and a sine function starts at 0. Now, something that you probably haven't learned in functions as of yet is that if I attach a number to x or to my angle or to whatever it may be that we're dealing with on the x-axis, if I attach a number to that, it will shift the function horizontally. So in other words, it will move it left or right. So focus on the cos function. And I'm going to add a number 
to the x degree. So in other words, I'm adding values to the y to the x axis. And when I do that, you'll see how it shifts. Do you see how it shifts horizontally? So that's what it's doing when I add a number to the x. We know though that for a co-function, we are dealing with 90 degrees. So either 90 plus or 90 minus. So going with what I just told you, that means that when I add 90 to x, it's going to shift the function 90 degrees horizontally. So let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to move this function 90 degrees to the right. And when I do that, do you see how it perfectly overlaps the sine function? So that tells me now that when I move a cos function 90 degrees to the right, it becomes sine. Let's do it in the other direction now. So there's the, num there's the function that we started with at 0. And I'm going to move it 90 degrees to the left now. So 90 degrees to the left. Do you see how it perfectly mirrors that sine function? So it's a sine function reflected about the x-axis. So taking that little bit of information that we saw when I moved those graphs left and right, what we actually get out is our co-functions. And you could do the same thing with a sine function, move it left or right, and see how it perfectly overlaps a cosine function or a cos function. So on our cast diagram now, your updated version will have 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. We will have our reductions of 180 minus theta, 180 plus theta, 360 minus theta. And now we'll have as well our co-functions 90 plus, 90 minus theta, and 90 plus theta. And from what we learnt when moving those graphs, we saw that when I took cos and I moved it 90 degrees to the left, or to the right rather, it became sine x. So there's your first formula. When I took cos and I moved it 90 degrees to the right, or the left, you'll know, you'll remember that it perfectly reflected a sine function. So it will become negative sine x. Then sine, well the signs are easy and you can go and prove it to yourself, but sine of 90 plus or minus x becomes cos x. So you'll sort of see that this cos of 90 plus x, that there is an exception. So as long as you remember that one, you'll be fine. So cos of 90 minus x becomes sine x, and sine of 90 plus or minus x becomes cos x. Make sure that in every single question you deal with, your first step is always to draw that cast diagram. So now that we've learned what a co-function is, where it comes from, and the formulas that we can use, let's go and do some examples. So here's our first example, and immediately you'll see the first thing that I've got written down here is my cast diagram. Now I can go and look at the question. So the question would be to simplify this algebraic expression. And from what we've learned so far, you'll see that the cos of 90 plus, well, that's a co-function, whereas the sine of 360 minus, that is a reduction. So in the numerator, we've got a co-function, and in the denominator, we've got a reduction. So let's deal with those. Cos of 90 plus theta, 
we know that that was our exception from the previous video. So cos becomes sine, and because it's 90 plus theta, we get minus sine of theta. And I put a bracket around it like that. Then we'll deal with the denominator. So it's sine 360 minus theta. This angle over here is in quadrant number 4. It's in the cos quadrant. So if I fill in all of those letters on the cos diagram, you'll see that the 360 minus is in the cos quadrant. And sine is negative in the cos quadrant. So I write that negative in front. Because it's a reduction, I don't change it. It stays sine. So it becomes sine of, drop the reduction, and take down the angle, which is theta. Now you can see that those two brackets just cancel each other out, and our final answer is 1. All right, so now we've got our second example. And let's just go quickly and pick out which are our reductions and which are our co-ratios or our co-functions. So guys, are you sort of seeing immediately that you need to firstly check which are co-functions and which are reductions? Because they're all mixed together. So we'll do the co-functions in yellow and we'll do the reductions in orange. So we should be able to see that there's a co-function and there's a co-function. And co-functions, we swap between sine and cos. And there we have a reduction. And there we have a reduction. So let's go ahead and answer this question now. Sine of 360 minus theta. We know that 360 minus theta is in this quadrant over here, where cos is positive. So sine will become negative, and so it will become negative sine. Drop the reduction, bring down the angle. Negative sine theta, put a bracket around it. Then we've got sine of 90 plus theta. We know that there's only one exception, and that is with cos of 90 plus theta. This is sine. So that will simply become cos, drop the co-function, theta, over. Then we've got cos of 90 plus, cos of 90 minus theta. So again, this is not an exception. So we swap between sine and cos. So cos will become sine. We drop the co-function. We write the angle sine of theta. Then our last one is a reduction. We've got cos of 360 minus theta. We know that 360 minus is in the fourth quadrant, again where cos is positive, and we've got cos as the ratio, so it will stay positive, so it will be cos, and then we drop the reduction and we take the angle down. Now it becomes simple algebra. The cos and the cos will cancel. The sine and the sine will cancel. We're left with a negative. So our final answer is negative 1. So guys, that is cofunctions for you. Swapping between sine and cos. In the next video, we're going to have a look at negative angles. And then questions where it becomes slightly more difficult to, de to distinguish what we're dealing with. So, for example, if I gave you cos of theta minus 180, no longer one of our reductions, but we can see that we got all the right pieces in there. So, what are we going to do? That's what we'll do in the next video.